And we are live. Buonasera, buongiorno, buonasera, buongiorno a tutti. It is 9 p.m. here in London. Let me know where you are watching from. Uh, I'm going to make sure that everything is working. Let me know if you can hear me okay. That's super important. Now, for some reason, I can hear myself twice, so hopefully you can't hear that as well. Let me just double check here what's going on. Okay, I think it's working. Let me know where you're joining from. Let me know where you're watching. Buon anno nuovo, if I haven't seen you already this year. I know it's almost the end of January, but I feel like it's... Uh, <laughs> It's well and truly deserved to say hello to you because I haven't really shown my face on my YouTube channel live for a while. So thank you so much for joining. I'm going to be sharing with you some really cool hacks that you can use to implement to help you to learn Italian. I'll give a few moments uh, for a few more people to jump in. Um, but yes, please make sure that you have a pen and a piece of paper or a notepad with you so you can take some notes. Um, this is going to be an interactive masterclass uh, where I'm going to be sharing with you seven hacks to help you learn Italian vocabulary faster. Now, today we're going to be we're going to be focusing on how you can look for patterns and use these as shortcuts for learning Italian, which will make the whole process feel less intimidating, less foreign, less scary, and overall more achievable. So I can see here that we've got Basil is watching from the UK. Hey Basil, thanks for joining. Make sure you got a pen and a piece of paper. Um, for those of you that are just joining, you are actually able to type in the comments and then I can drag them across and you can appear on the screen. So that's a message there from Basil. So thanks, Basil, for watching. Um, so what I'm about to share with you today, some of you may have seen or heard what I'm going to be sharing with you, which isn't a bad thing because, as we all know, as me, I'm, myself is included in this, you know, even though we hear something, even though, uh, you know, it's it makes sense and we appreciate the wisdom and the knowledge behind it, we don't always remember it and we don't always implement it. So for those of you that have seen what I'm going to share with you today, um, you're welcome. This is a reminder. <laughs> um, we, you know, we forget to apply these things. So this is a little friendly reminder to remember that there are ways to make the process of learning Italian easier. And for those of you that haven't seen what I'm about to share with you before. You're in for a real treat. It's a real surprise. It's really exciting. Um, I like to, um, yeah, talk about these little hacks because these are things that we forget. You know, when we learn Italian, we forget that there are little shortcuts, there are little hacks that we can remind ourselves to use to go back to basics when it feels like it's all too overwhelming. So today's masterclass is a gentle reminder to those of you that knows these hacks that know these hacks, and a bit of a, a welcome to my world and how I teach and how I approach language learning uh, and how I teach Italian specifically using my 80-20 method. This is what it's all tied into. So if you don't know what the 80-20 rule is and how I apply this into my 80-20 method, um, it basically states that 80% of your success or results come from just 20% of the effort that you put in. So actually, this rule applies to many areas of our lives without us really realizing it. So to go back even further, this principle was coined by the management consultant, Joseph M. Duran, and it was named after an Italian economist. Of all people, it was an Italian economist, and his name was Vilfredo Pareto. This is also known as the 80-20 rule or Pareto's principle. Now, in 1896, he found that approximately 80% of the land in Italy was owned by 20% of the population. Okay, but what does this have to do with language learning? Well, this Pareto principle can be observed and used for higher efficiency when it comes to learning Italian and learning languages in general. And this is how I teach Italian, using my own, my own interpretation of this 80-20 rule, this 80-20 method that I talk about. 
So the 80-20 rule in language learning means that most of your success is the result of only about 20% of the effort that you make. And it also means that only about 20% of the things that you actually learn contribute to the, a large percentage, the 80% of what you're actually going to be using in everyday situations. And this is how it's going to help you to improve faster. Because if you focus on that top 20% that you use in 80% of the situations, imagine how powerful that is, right? To get you, you know, hit the ground running. <laughs> so for instance, so quite a few language learners make the mistake of trying to learn as much as possible from all these different topics that you may not need to know about and all this different vocabulary. So expanding your vocabulary as wide as possible isn't what you need to get started when you're speaking Italian or even if, even if you're at like a, an advanced beginner or an intermediate stage, you need to focus on the stuff that you're actually going to use. So don't get me wrong, it's still a good thing to have a wide vocabulary and it's important to never stop learning. However, you should never wait until you learn everything before you start speaking. So the fact is only a small percentage of small percentage of the vocabulary of a language, around two to three thousand words, of the most frequently used words, cover about 80% of all the conversations and texts. Now this includes you know, anything from chatting with friends or family and relatives, reading comic books and having like you know conversations with people in everyday situations. You are reusing the same vocabulary over and over, the same tenses. You might be muddling them muddling them up a little bit and mixing them around but there is an active vocabulary and an active part of the grammar that you are using. So this is how I approach language learning and learning Italian. So what are some other examples of this 80-20 method or this 80-20 ratio in real life? Well, think about the next time you go into a gelateria, a place where they sell gelato, an ice cream shop in Italy, and pay attention to what people buy. I bet you'll find that there is a 20%, 20% of the flavors that they have are among the most popular. They're getting 80% of the attention. Or think about the monuments and landmarks in Italy that you hear about and that tourists want to see. Of all the things that you could possibly see, there is about 20%, maybe the ratio is a little bit different, like 30 to 70%, where people are just so interested in seeing the Colosseum, the Trevi Fountain, they're going to visit the Vatican and the Vatican Museums, they want to see the Statue of David. So of all the things, they make up probably around you know this large ratio, this 20%, of all the things that they could possibly see, these are the things that tourists, you know, the first time they go to Italy, are getting the most eyeballs. Or what about pizza? When you go to a pizzeria, a restaurant, and you've got all these different pizza options on the menu, but I'll bet if you pay attention to the menu, you'll see that the top few or the top handful of pizzas listed on the menu are going to be the most popular. Pizzas like a margarita or a marinara or a quattro stagioni. So next time you're out in the world, think about how you can apply this 80-20 rule. But today we're going to be focusing on how we can apply the 80-20 rule to language learning. So to go back to what I mentioned earlier, we've got a few more people joining. We've got Sean. Hi, Sean. Thanks for joining us. Just found your channel, started teaching myself two weeks ago. Thanks for being such an incredible teacher. Welcome, Sean. It's wonderful to have you here. Let us know where, where you are watching from. Ellen. Ellen is watching from New York. Thanks for joining, Ellen. It's lovely to see you here. Um, if you missed it, I am about to go through the masterclass and so make sure you have a pen and a piece of paper with you. Ah, Sean, you just said that you're from, well, you're watching from Baltimore. Amazing. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining, guys. So let's go into, well, let me ask you, actually, how are you learning Italian? What methods or what courses, what textbooks are you using? Oh, no. I've lost my scene again. <laughs> oh, I knew this was going to happen. Let me try this again. There we go. How are you learning Italian? Let me know in the comments. I'll give you a couple of minutes. Are you using any courses, any apps? Uh, Sean says that he just downloaded the 100 most common phrases. Ah, yes, this is my uh, the cheat sheet that I created. 8020 is genius. I'm signing up for the actual classes this week. Oh, that's amazing, Sean. 
Oh, well, you're going to enjoy this masterclass tonight because it's a bit of a sneak peek into how I teach Italian, especially the very first lesson, because uh, I like to make sure that you don't feel so thrown in the deep end when you're learning Italian. So I'm going to ease you into it. And that's what today's masterclass is all about, sharing seven ways that you can simplify the process so you can learn Italian. So Franny is here. Franny says that uh, they're using Duolingo. How are you finding it, Franny? Franny, is that a Franny for Francesca, maybe? <laughs> Franny, how are you finding Fra Duolingo? Give you a couple more moments. Basil says that he's used language apps, but not very helpful. Yeah, so there are pros and cons to language apps. Um, Language apps are good for having for creating a daily language learning habit. Actually, why am I putting those over here? Let's put them here, these comments. <laughs> so, yeah, language learning apps are great for creating a daily language learning habit because they're small, sorry, they're short bite-sized lessons. But when it comes to the grammar and piecing things all together and making sense of all the ins and outs, you know, the masculine, the feminine, verb conjugations, they're not so great. Uh, they're good for vocabulary, but then sometimes you're learning vocabulary that you don't need. So, again, it comes back to this 80-20. What are we actually focusing on? What is your priority? Um, it's okay. Just Franny would like more. I'm not sure what you mean by that. <laughs> okay. So now that I've seen that you guys are playing around with my cheat sheets, Sean, I, I see you. Franny's with Duolingo. Baz has been playing around with the language apps as well. Today I'm going to be showing with you some more practical ways of approaching learning Italian and vocabulary. So let me just get rid of these for the moment and jump into. Okay, so Italian vocabulary isn't as foreign as you may think. Now we've got a few examples here of words that are exactly the same in English as they are in Italian with the exact same meaning the only difference is that the pronunciation changes. I can see Mark Burton has just joined and he's using my travel course. Amazing. Christy, one of my star students. It's lovely to see you here. If you have any questions about the courses, Intrepid Italian, um, that Christy has joined, please ask in the comments. Uh, Christy joined my courses but over a year ago now and she's been amazing. She's had a lot of success with the courses so far. Sean also says, what does Sean say? That he's been using Duolingo. It's fun and easy to use. It's very basic. I've learned much more from your channel. Oh, that's great to hear, Sean. I'm so happy to hear that. Well, you're going to be learning much more tonight, so I'm very excited for this. So thank you for sharing your comments, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, now let's jump back into these words. Now these are cognates. So these are words that, sorry, loan words. These are words that are basically taken from English and have been adopted into Italian. So these are called cognates. So what do I keep saying cognates? I mean loan words because they're exactly the same. Cognates is what we're going to be covering next. So things like gadgets, jogging, feeling, shock, and okay. If we were to say these in Italian, the pronunciation changes. So we'll say things like gadgets. So you can see that you can hear that the pronunciation changes slightly to have the pronunciation of an, an Italian A, for example. It isn't a gadget, it's a gadget. So there's a bit of a, an emphasis there on the G as well. The J in Italian doesn't exist. You might come across it in dialects in Italy. So this is more jogging or jogging, depending on who's saying it. But this is pronounced jogging. They also say things like feeling, unfeeling. They'll say shock, uno shock. This combination doesn't exist in Italian, this CK shock. Um, but it does because it's a it's in a loan word. And they'll also say things like okay. Okay, so it's a bit of a drawn out okay. It's not an okay like a short. In a time, it becomes longer. Okay. So these are just a few words um, that will just whet your appetite, so to speak, when it comes to familiarizing yourself with Italian vocabulary. 
We've got some more examples here, and you'll see that these all begin with an article. This is the definite article. Definite article means that we're basically saying the or the in English. So the radio is la radio. Any guesses of what that is? <laughs> we have l'autobus for an, a bus or an auto bus. L'antenna. Yep, it's an antenna for a TV or anything that's an, that needs an antenna. Now, the next one here, the H in Italian is silent. And we're going to see a couple of examples here of words that have a silent H. And it is l'hotel. So we just skip over that H and we say l'hotel. We say l'aria, l'idea. Now, the next example of where the H is silent is with l'hamburger. And they roll the R's. Now, it isn't essential that you roll your R's, but if you can, it's amazing um, because it'll make you feel like you're actually, you know, you got like the, the Italian pronunciation down pat. But there are a lot of Italians that can't pronounce the R like would they roll it off the tongue. And it's called an R mosha, a soft R. So don't feel like you're incompetent. Don't feel like you'll never be able to speak it because you can't roll your R's. A lot of Italians can't, and it's completely normal. So never fear if you can't roll it, but if you can, amazing. We have il cocktail for a drink, il jazz, type of music, il cinema, a cinema, il computer. Now, there's also a word for this, but Italians also use il computer. computer. They also have il portatile, which literally translates to the portable. Um, they say il bar. Il bar is actually a place where you'll have a coffee. It's not a bar like as in you might know in Australia or the UK or in America where you go into like a sports bar and you're having alcohol and you're watching TV. This bar is where you you have like your morning pit stop and you go and get a, a cornetto, a croissant, a pastry, and an espresso, a coffee to get your day started. Um, il blues another type of music genre like we have with il jazz, il film, il rock and roll, another uh, genre. These are because these are American terms. So you can see why they've been drawn into or pulled into Italian this way. They also have il weekend. You can also say fine settimana, the end of the week, but you can also say il weekend for the weekend. We have il camping, i jeans, Lo snob, lo shock, lo shopping, lo sport, lo shampoo, and lo zoo. So there are so many words, so many loan words in Italian that come from English that you can use to get uh, your Italian vocabulary kickstarted. Now, again, if you've just joined, now, you may have seen this before. You may have seen me talk about loan words and cognates. And it is a gentle reminder to remind you that we forget about that there are these little shortcuts. These are, there are these little rules and these little hacks that you can use. And to remind yourself that learning Italian, if it does get a little bit tricky, it's not as hard as you may think. And to always look for little shortcuts, patterns in the grammar, patterns in the vocabulary that you can use to unlock and to remind yourself when you're actually speaking, oh, what was that word again? Oh, I remember there was this rule. Well, we're going to be looking at some of these rules in a sec. So let me go to the next frame. So we're going to be looking at Italianizing. I know this is a word that I made up, but I, I think it's the best way to describe it. Italianizing nouns. How do we convert an English word into an Italian word? So as a recap, for those of you that don't know, for those of you that do know, I don't assume that you know anything when it comes to grammar because when I learned Italian, I didn't know what a verb was and I felt really intimidated by it. So if you feel like you're a little bit rusty with grammatical terms and you're not quite sure what's what, never fear, I go back to basics. So a noun is a word that you can place the, a uh, or an in front of. So think of a piece of pizza or a slice of pizza. The Vatican, a museum. So these are all examples of what a noun is. So now let's take a look at how we can go about changing them from English into Italian. Now I'm going to be sharing with you a bunch of these. 
Ah, uh, oh, amazing. Hello, Basil. You sent me a super chat <laughs> for supporting me. Crazy how many loan words there are. Thank you so much for your support, Basil. That's amazing. It's very generous of you. You've just sent a super chat. For those of you that don't know, he's just sent me a little donation. So thank you. It's very kind. Okay, so I'll just chuck this down the bottom there. Thank you so much, Basil. Okay, so the first rule I'm going to be sharing with you today is nouns in English that end in Y, typically these nouns that end in Y in English, big end in I, A in Italian. And these are just a few examples. Biology, philosophy, sociology, anatomy. These all become, we drop the Y and we add the I, A in Italian. Have you guys ever seen this before? Have you used it before? Now, what does the pronunciation sound like? Biology becomes la biologia, philosophy. Now, that PH actually changes into an F in Italian. There's no PH combination like in English. That becomes la filosofia, la filosofia, philosophy, filosofia. Sociology, bit of a tongue twister even in English, sociology, la sociologia. Sociologia. <laughs> it's a bit of a tongue twister too in, in Italian. But you can see that it's the gia, ia, fia. And the last one is latonomia. Anatomy becomes latonomia. So this is one of the ways that you can apply this little trick to words that end in Y in English and how you can transform them into Italian. If you like that, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. If you can think of any other examples using this rule, you can share that too in the comments. Rule number two, nouns in English, many nouns in English, ending in IC or ICS, become ICA in Italian. For example, music becomes la musica. Politics becomes la politica. Republic becomes la repubblica. Mathematics or mathematic becomes la matematica. So this is another way that you can take English words and transform them into Italian. Are we enjoying this? <laughs> I know there's a little bit of a delay, but let me know if you can think of any other examples. Let me know if this has, um, if you've learned this before, I'd be super curious to know if you've used it and applied it. Maybe you knew it, but you haven't really applied it yet. So this is what today is all about. Just reminding you that these little shortcuts in the language exist. And this is how I like to approach teaching you Italian. So if you're enjoying this, you're going to enjoy Intrepid Italian. So my courses, which are currently open for registrations until the 4th of February. And you can visit intrepiditalian.com to find out more. Okay, let's look at the next rule I'm going to share with you today to help you learn Italian nouns. So many nouns in English ending in TY become TA with an accent in Italian. For example, city becomes la città. Identity becomes l'identità. Now that TA with the accent it means that we're putting emphasis on it. Whenever you see an accent above a letter, it means that's where the stress falls. So it's not la città, it's la città, l'identità, la società for society, university, l'università. So this is where the emphasis goes. So whenever you see an accent, make sure that you put the stress on it as well. So that's rule number three. Now, if you're writing these rules down, you're going to need it because we're going to have a little bit of a quiz in two rules time. That's right. I'm just double checking here. OK, so let's take a look at rule number four. Hack number four. Secret number four. Nouns in English ending in C-E become Z-A or Z-A in Italian. So importance becomes L'importanza. Elegance becomes, el, le, well, it's got an L there, so it's l'eleganza. We're saying l'eleganza. Le, le, <laughs> Violence becomes la violenza. Patience becomes la pazienza. 
So again, lots of words in English that end in CE become ZA or ZA in Italian. And you can start to make sentences with all these words, by the way, which is really, really exciting because you can start to form sentences after the first lesson uh, when you join Intrepid Italian because I focus on these, on similar rules like this and other words. So cognates and loan words to ease you into the language. And it's really fun. And this is what I want to remind you is that language learning shouldn't be stressful. It should be enjoyable. Um, and if you're on my on my email list, if you're on my newsletter yesterday, I was talking about how um, I always think of A Spoonful of Sugar in Mary Poppins. It's one of my favorite childhood movies and still quite a fan to this day of Julie Andrews. But there's a line that she where she says, in every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. You find the fun and then snap, the job's a game. So I always try and find the fun part of whatever challenge I'm facing. And for me, learning Italian, the fun part was looking for all these little clues, looking for patterns, looking for shortcuts. And this is why I get really excited to share this with you because it is fun. It's like, oh, it's like having an epiphany every time you see a word like this and it works. And then, of course, you know, there are some exceptions because that's how languages are. They're full of exceptions. But more often than not, you can actually apply rules like this. And that's really exciting because you can start to piece together words and sentences without too much effort. So let's jump over to the next rule, which is nouns, many nouns, not all nouns, many nouns in English ending in T-I-O-N become Z or Z-I-O-N-E in Italian. So, for example, we have words like nation, la nazione. Attention becomes l'attenzione. Education becomes l'educazione. Situation becomes la situazione. So you can see, again, that there are so many rules like this. We're already up to five and I've still got more. And there's even more that I share in the courses themselves. But I can only share so much with you here today to keep it short and sweet to let you know how easy it can be. So let me know if you can think of any other examples. But on the next slide, I'm actually going to give you a little quiz. Are we ready for it? Do you have a pen and a piece of paper? I hope so because here it comes. Now, based on these rules that I've shared with you today, the five different rules, how would you translate these words? Distance, difficulty, plastic and station. Again, focus on those last few letters, one or two letters, or even three or four letters at the end, and what you can swap them out for based on the rules that we've covered so far. So I'll give you a couple of moments to type in the chat. You can do them all at once or one at a time and I will drag them over and then I will reveal the final answers. It's going to check here for any other questions and comments that may have come up in the meantime. Making sure that everything is working. I can see that there's a bit of a delay over here, but that's okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Basil says, let's go. All right, Basil, I'm waiting for your, your answers. <laughs> so distance, difficulty, plastic and station. I can see here that Basil sent the first one across. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Here we go. La distancia. Distancia. Give you a couple more moments. Franny, I sent yours through. Thank you. 
<laughs> Basil, I should have written the rules down. <laughs> should I go back and give you a recap? Should I do that? Oh, we got a one of my students. I don't, I can't, what is your name? Secretariat girl? Secretariat girl? Better late than never, I liked your 30 day verb challenge. That's amazing. I'm so glad that you enjoyed that. Sean says distanza. Mark says la distanza. Should I do a little bit of a recap here? Let me, let's see here. I'll keep these on screen. Let me see if I can. Would it work if I put these in the comments? I'll put these in the comments and then you guys can see them to help you out a little bit. That's so rule three, rule four, and then rule five. Now the spelling will change a little bit. It will vary sometimes, like the PH becomes an F, but give it a little go. We've got another one from Sean, amazing. Let's put that up on screen. Oof, I can't always resize these. <laughs> some reason. Okay. Roll blue. Also all the little bits and pieces are covered so I'm trying to find a bit of space. Dificilmente. Basil's got another one, la difficultia. Sean's got another one, la plasticia. Now put all the rules in the comments so you can refer back to those if you're unsure. Give you a few more moments and then I'll give you the answers. Sean says, La stazione. Oh, Basil, the autocorrect isn't helping. Yeah. Yeah, it can be a bit of a challenge. I would definitely recommend you guys to turn on your Italian keyboard if you can. Uh, this is something that you can do after this session. But for, yeah, when you're typing messages back to me on Instagram, for example, or writing comments on my YouTube channel and you want to type in Italian, um, it's definitely a lot easier to have a keyboard, uh, your Italian keyboard activated. That way it won't try to autocorrect every time. Or you can just turn off predictive text altogether. So we've got a whole bunch of different answers here. Hopefully you can see all of those. And in just a moment, I will show you the correct answers. Oh gosh, you lost me. <laughs> The secretary at the horse, the race horse, how about Winks? Oh, yeah, you've lost me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Mike has just shared another answer with us. Thank you, Mark. Ellen's just shared one as well. La distanza. So I think we've got most of you have given a few different answers and make sure that I've got them all here. So you can see the rules that I've posted in the comments in case you are unsure. Are we ready to see the answers? I think we might be. 
Got another one here. Plastica. La distance, I think. Yep, perfect. All right, great. Well done, everyone. Okay, let me see if I can go to the next frame without there being a bit of chaos with all these. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to delete these now. So when I go to the next frame and show you the answers, so it won't be covered up with all your wonderful comments and answers. So you got a couple more moments to think about it until then. Okay. Let's see here. This one is hidden. Why can't I get that one? Okay, here we go. Just have to resize things a little bit. Okay, so the answers are distance becomes distanza. That CE becomes a Z or a ZA. Difficult, difficulty becomes difficulta. Difficulta. I should have changed that to an O. Difficulta. TY becomes TA. Plastic becomes plastica. And station becomes stazione. How many did you guys get right? Let me know. Out of four. One, two, three, or four. How many guys how many did you get right? Give you a couple of moments. So just for those, oops. Just want to make sure that you guys get the correct spelling here because I had a bit of a typo there. So it should be difficulta in a tie, not difficulta. So the U becomes an O in Italian, not a U. Just for those of you that are, are watching, <laughs> um, that I can't actually change the slides on the fly, so I put it in the comments. Difficulta. Basil got two out of four. Okay, when is it an L apostrophe or when is it la? Okay, so when it's feminine, then think of la. It will start with a la. But if it's feminine and it starts with a vowel, then it becomes L apostrophe. So that is the rule. Great question, Basil. Mark got four out of four. Amazing. Congratulations, that's a great score. Basil got two out of four. Let me put these up on screen. Ooh, let me resize. Ooh, it's resizing things a little bit tricky. Sean got two out of four and I put CIA instead of CA. That's all right. We live and we learn. Oh no, Mike has changed his answer. He said he got three, not four. Okay, brilliant. Great, everyone. Excellent. And, you know, there's, there's no pressure, obviously, because, you know, you, you've, you've only just learned these rules and I'm putting you on the spot, you know. So getting one or two out of four is still a great effort because, again, you go into think about how to use these in the future. This is the first time that you're, you've come across these rules. When you come across it again, this is why I always revise Revise and review, depending on if you're Australian or American. <laughs> Every time that you refresh your memory, I should say, these things will become a little bit quicker. They'll come to your attention a little bit more uh, easily and you'll be able to remember these rules. So you're doing amazing so far. Yes, you went for the adverb, Secretariat Girl. <laughs> yes, we're looking for the nouns. We're translating, Italianizing nouns at the moment. But we are going to be moving on to some more rules. So let's do that. So next we are going to look at Italianizing adjectives. So again, for those of you that aren't familiar with what an adjective is, an adjective is a word that you can place is in front of. So is big, is small, is nice, is kind. The pizza is delicious. The coffee is hot. So anything that we can place is in front of is an adjective. We're describing it. They always say things like, you know, a noun is the name of something and a 
verb is a doing word and an adjective is, you know, a describing word. But I like to give like proper examples because it's it's just a bit easier to remember. So an adjective is a word that you can place is in front of. Is big, is small, is this, is that. So that's what we're going to look at next, Italianizing adjectives. So we've got rule number six. So we are going to do seven rules tonight. Rule number six is adjectives in English ending in AL become ALE in Italian. For example, special becomes speciale. Now that CI combination in Italian is a CH sound, just like in the word ciao. We don't say ciao, we say ciao. So special, this is CI, it's a CH sound in English, but that combination in Italian becomes a CH sound. So speciale, speciale. Personal becomes personale, personale. Original becomes originale. I would love for you guys, if you can, to say them out loud. Get that mouth-to-tongue connection happening because, especially as a native Australian speaker, we have a very lazy tongue. We don't like to open our mouths. We don't like to enunciate. We don't even say the letter R. Like if I'm talking about the country Ireland, like where is the R in that? There is no R. When it comes to Italian, we need to make sure that we're pronouncing and enunciating clearly. We're going to get our mouths around all those beautiful vowels in Italian, and there's going to be so many of them that you're going to encounter, especially in words like personale, speciale, originale. And then we have sentimental, which is sentimentale. We could also have mentale. So there are lots of different vowels here. So if you can, say them out loud. Get that tongue active, that mouth opening. Um, you know, it took me a little while to get used to being comfortable with opening my mouth, my mouth more. I felt a bit like pretentious because in Australia, you know, it's all a bit like tall poppy syndrome. Where we don't want to be like pretend that we're better than anyone else. So for me to open my mouth, I know this sounds super strange, but to open my mouth and enunciate clearly, I felt really strange. It felt very foreign to me. But it is something that you need to do uh, to get, you need to get over that. And to get over that, it just be, you need to just, just start doing it because you realize that it actually helps you to pronounce the words properly and to be understood. So make sure that you open your mouth and enunciate clearly. So let's take a look at, we have a little quiz now. The next quiz, oh no, this is the seventh rule, and then we're going to have the quiz. So more adjectives. So adjectives in English ending in E-C-T become E-T-T-O in Italian. So we have words like perfect becomes perfetto, perfetto. Now that double T combination, we need to make sure that we're pronouncing that T letter twice. It's not perfetto, it's perfetto. Perfetto, we're hitting that T twice. Correct becomes corretto. There's two R's, two T's, we need to pronounce both of them. Corretto, corretto. Erect becomes eretto. Direct becomes diretto. What we're doing now is a diretto, it's alive, it's a direct. So the literal translation for alive in Italian. Un diretto. So, but that would be a noun. This is an adjective. So, these are the two different rules for Italianizing adjectives. So, I'm going to give you a recap before we go into the quiz. So, rule six, adjectives in English ending in A-L become A-L-E in Italian. So, we're going to go to the quiz in a second. So, you may want to write this down. Rule number seven, adjectives in English. Ending in E-C-T, become E-T-T-O in Italian. So we've got A-L, becomes A-L-E. We've got E-C-T, becomes E-T-T-O. So let's take a look at the quiz for Italianizing adjectives. So how would you translate these words? Artificial, 
mental, dialect, and effect. So we've got two rules, four words. Toka avoy, your turn. It's your turn to apply these two rules and Italianize these Italian, well, these, these adjectives from English into Italian. So I'll give you a couple of moments. Alan just shared her score from the last round. Bravissima, she got four correct. Sorry, Alana. Alan, I should say. Congratulations, that's an excellent score. Bravissima. Basil's just come through with his first answer for A. Give you a few more moments to the others. Guys are doing amazing. Oh, coming through quick, thick and fast with all your answers. Amazing. Basil says for number for, for number B. For letter B. <laughs> the second one. Mentale, okay. C, he's got dialetto, okay. And we've got D, okay. Actually, I could put all yours in order like this, can't I? <laughs> Sean's got his as well. I'll add you to the mix. Thank you, Franny. Mark, add you in as well. Brilliant. Running out of space a little bit. I'll try and stack them. How's this looking? Brilliant, guys. Oh, these are getting covered up. I don't want them to be covered up. Wow, you guys are doing amazing. Look at this. What am I up to? Violetto. Mike, Perfetto, Franny, brilliant. I think you guys are getting the hang of it already. This is excellent. Now I can see some of these are getting covered up, so I'm going to just move them around a little bit more. I should have allowed more space. I think this works a little bit better. Dialetto, mentale, typing too quickly. <laughs> well, that's great that you've noticed your your typos there, Mike. It's good practice. Bravissimo. If we can self-correct, it means that we'll remember it. And it means that you're learning. This is excellent. Sean, amazing. Now, what have I missed? I've got, I've got Franny's. Got marks. Okay, I think I've got everyone. Well done. These are excellent, guys. You're doing so well. But have you seen me? Well done. <laughs> well, I think we can go to the answers now. What do you say? I don't think we've got any more comments or answers coming through. I think that's everyone. So let me just get rid of these now so I can reveal the answers. On the next slide, and then you can tell me what your score is out of four. And we've got one more. Oh gosh, there's always one hidden behind there. Okay. All right, and the answers are. Artificial becomes artificiale. Mental becomes mentale. Dialect becomes dialetto. And effect becomes effetto. 
Let me know how many you got right. How many you got correct out of four? One out of four. How did you go? This is a good one for adjectives. So you know how to apply these rules to nouns and adjectives. You can also apply it to verbs as well. So the, the learning doesn't stop here. It continues in Intrepid Italian into the first lesson of A1. Now, I teach Italian in a bit of a different order than what you might be used to, for example, in a textbook, in a language class, even on Duolingo of all places, because I want to make sure that you guys can actually find, well, I actually create a bridge from English into Italian, and I use, I do that by creating these connections between, well, with the vocabulary. So nouns, adjectives, verbs, these are the ways that you're able, these are the ways that you're able to ease your way into the language by focusing on the cognates and the loan words. And it's a lot of fun too. And look at you guys, you're doing so well already. Mark got four, Sean got four out of four, Franny got four out of four. You guys are killing it. You guys, this is obviously resonating with you, these rules, and I'm so happy to hear it. I'm so happy to see it. Um, <laughs> Secretary, 100%, I posted all of them at once. You did. Amazing. Congratulations, guys. This is, this is really powerful stuff that you're learning. Basil says he got three out of four and he's blaming autocorrect. <laughs> Why not? Why not? You know for next time, and that's totally fun. You know all the rules now. And what's really fun is that you can now go away and think about other words that could follow this rule and then double check in a dictionary and look it up. And you might find that is it there it's you can apply that rule to that word, or you can might you might find that it's an exception to the rule. Oops, I'm trying to move this and I can't for some reason. <laughs> Sorry. This um this software I'm using to host this live is a little bit challenging and I'm just trying to move it and because it's not letting me, it's doing crazy things. Amazing. Thank you so much, guys. I just want to close these before we go on to the next slide. But I'm super proud of you. I'm super proud of you for giving yourself the space to sit down and learn this stuff. It's a Sunday. It's either a Sunday morning, afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the world, or it's a Monday morning in Australia. And you're taking the time to actually put this stuff into practice. And, you know, it doesn't take an hour a day to learn Italian. My my lessons in within Intrepid Italian are more bite-sized. Obviously, here we're doing, we're having a live interaction. But if you are interested in fitting learning Italian around your busy lifestyle, and that's what Intrepid Italian is all about. It's all about allowing you to learn Italian in your own time at your own pace. These are self-paced language courses. So you can learn on a lunch break, before work, before dinner, while you're waiting for your dinner to cook. You can squeeze it in at any time. And one of my students, Sheila, found that that worked best for her. And that's why my, why my courses resonated with her so much. So for this week, registrations are open. You can join one level, two levels, or you can get the Intrepid Italian Bundle, which gives you all three levels for a wonderful uh, discounted price. Now, these courses go up to a B1 level. So if you are considering moving to Italy, you want to get a job in Italy, you want to apply for university, you need to get a visa that requires you to pass a language test. The B1 level is the level that they require, and this is what the my courses go up to. They go up to the B1 intermediate level. So today we had a look at the first lesson of the A1 level course, so loan words and cognates, and then we progressed through the grammar and the tenses all the way up to well, we cover a lot of the tenses actually up into the A1, A2 and B1. And I also have, we have one of our students that were joining earlier that had joined the verbs challenge. There's also the tenses challenge. So you may come across that on my website as well. But all the tenses are taught in these courses. But if you want to have more of a deeper dive into the courses, then you can use, uh, you can follow the Intrepid Italian 30 Day Tenses Challenge or the verbs challenge. They are complementary. All my courses complement each other. 
But if you are on a pathway to reaching fluency at whatever level that is for you, now I'm not talking about being like a native level proficient, you know, level of proficiency in the language. You can still do a lot with B1, which is why it's the minimum that they require if you're applying for university. When I moved to Italy, I was a B1 level going into like B2. And then I sat my C1 exam when I was in Italy. So the B1 level, you can have amazing conversations with people. You know, there are a few words that you don't know, but you're able to dance around them and get the feedback that you need to learn them. You're able to hold a conversation confidently. There was always going to be, you know, words and grammar that you don't, you know, that it doesn't fully click with at that stage. It's the same in English. You know, I don't know all the words in English, yet I'm still able to have amazing conversations with people. It's the same thing with Italian when you reach a B1 level. You you can do a lot with A1. You can do even more with A2. But B1 is where the fun really starts to happen because you feel a lot more confident in the language. So you're at that halfway point between being an absolute beginner and being a native level proficiency. So aiming for a B1, B2, even a C1 level uh, is amazing. So that's what my courses allow you to do. You can go from basically absolute zero to bravo, as I like to say, Um, and it's a lot of fun. So if you enjoyed today's lesson, then you're going to find a lot more cool things inside Intrepid Italian. So as I mentioned before, you do get... Um, support from me. Everything is fully downloadable, so you can download all the lessons, uh, the the transcripts, so you can actually you know read them if you don't have time to watch the lessons. The video lessons you can't download because I do update the course material, and I don't want you to have um, any outdated lessons. But all the transcripts you can download, all the audio files as well. You can do that. There are interactive exercises as well, so you can do you can download those uh, those worksheets and work through uh, the supporting exercises after each lesson. There are lifetime updates, so that's why I don't have the option to download the videos, but you can access these courses at any time of day. So, you know, we don't need to be online at the same time for you to learn Italian. You can take things at your own pace. And there's also support from me too. So you can jump into the private Facebook community that I have, or you can contact me uh, privately if you prefer to do that via email, or if you want to send me a DM on Instagram, you can do that too. Um, Anything that you you need support with in terms of answering any grammar questions, uh, that's what I'm here for. So I mentioned before that you can get the Intrepid Italian Bundle. So what is this exactly? So this means that you can get the A1, the A2 and the B1 plus this week only. You can also get two special bonus gifts. So one gift from me and one gift from my favourite language learning app, which is Mondly. Monly is what I used. I uh, actually discovered it when I was learning Norwegian. Uh, I couldn't find any other language learning apps that would help me learn Norwegian except Monly. Monly is available in over 40 languages. So I'm just going to connect my computer again to the power supply before it dies. Um, so Monly have kindly offered to give you a 12-month subscription to their app. Uh, absolutely free if you get the Intrepid Italian bundle. And then from me, you'll also get a bonus course, which is Intrepid Time for Confident Conversations. Now, this course is really fun because it focuses on listening comprehension, so understanding fast, real-world spoken Italian. And it's a story that you're following, two people, uh, they travel through Italy. So not only does it include grammar notes, vocabulary notes, you're also getting lots of cultural notes and sort of travel tips along the way. So it's very different. The format of this is very different from the the grammar courses, I should say, the A1 to B1. Um, This is more of a listing comprehension. So it's a lot of fun and it's something that I would recommend you do uh, once you complete the A1 course. Then you can start to play around with the Confident Conversations course. But nonetheless, if you wanted to get the Intrepid Italian Bundle, uh, that is yours for six nine four US dollars. If you were going to buy these individually, then it would be uh, three four seven for one course. So three four seven for the A one, three four seven for the A two, and three four seven for the B one. But you can get them all as a nice little bundle, so you get your whole pathway to intermediate fluency. Uh, 
for 694 US dollars. Uh, there is also the option to use a payment plan. So you can pay all in one go or you can pay over the course of three months. So it's totally up to you. It gives you the flexibility there and you have until the 4th of February to register. If you have any questions, just uh, send me a DM on Instagram, send me a comment on YouTube, send me an email at michelle at theintrepidguide.com and I'll be happy to answer any questions. One of the questions I get is, Michelle, I'm not sure, you know, if this is going to be the right fit for me. Um, you know, I'm not sure if it's going to be the right fit. I'm not sure if I have time. Well, that's okay because I have my famous Celebrate with a Spritz guarantee. So you can enroll today or tomorrow, as long as you enroll before the 4th, <laughs> and you can make take advantage of my uh, Celebrate with a Spritz guarantee. So you have 30 days to decide if this is the right fit for you, if it resonates with you, because I, you know, I don't want to take your money and you're not happy or satisfied with your results. So you can actually join today, have a play around with the lessons, get a feel for how I teach and the structure. And if you're not happy, just message me and I'll give you a full refund. So there's no harm done. You get a free lesson or free lessons. Um, and if it doesn't work, then I'll give you your money back. So nothing, nothing lost. Uh, so I'm just trying to make it a little bit easier for you because I know it can be a little bit daunting trying something new. I know there's a little bit of fear there, you know, sitting on the fence and, you know, I want to, but I'm not sure, umming and ahhing. Well, this is the best way for you to try. So give it a go. Let me know how you think, you know, let me know how you feel with the course material. And if it doesn't fit, then that's fine too because, you know, not everything resonates with everyone. You know, we're all different language learners. We all resonate with different textbooks or courses or teachers. But if you feel like that you resonate with my teaching style, then it's probably a good indication that you're going to enjoy Intrepid Italian. So that's it from me, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's masterclass. Thank you so much for giving me an hour of your time. I'm honoured. I hope you learned something from this masterclass today. And I look forward to seeing and speaking with you and welcoming you into Intrepid Italian very soon. Ciao for now. Alla prossima. Bye.